In this video, I'm going to go over break and continue in C, which are two tools we can use to modify the regular control flow of a loop. So let's say we've got a standard loop in C where we're going to have some counter variable. We're going to say I is equal to zero. We're going to run our loop, say from while we're going to run our loop so long as I is less than 10. And we'll start off by incrementing I and then printing it out. So we'll increment I and then we'll print out I. We'll say I percent D with a new line and print out I. And what I'm going to do too is I'm going to throw in two printfs up here and say like loop start and then loop end down here. And I just want to make it very clear when the loop is starting and when the loop is ending. So now if I, if I run this here, we get loop start, I1, I2, I3, all the way to I10, and then loop end. And this isn't too surprising if we're familiar with how loops work because you know we set I equal to zero initially and so long as i is less than 10, we're going to continue to execute this loop body again and again. And we increment i and we print it out. So that's why we start off with i1 because we, we increment i and then print it out. And then we end off with i10 because at this point here, once i is equal to 10, we'll print out i10. But then when we check the loop condition again, i is no longer less than 10 and therefore we stop execution and the, of the loop body. And the, the control flow actually goes down here and we print out loop end next, right? Because this loop is now done. Control flow goes to the next statement and we print out loop end and that's why we get loop end here. So break and continue are tools that we can use to modify the sort of quote unquote regular control flow of the loop. And, and with, in the case of break, what we can do is actually break out of the loop sort of early. We can break out of the loop maybe according to some condition that we check. So for example, what I could do is this, I could say, if I is equal to five, break. So what this is gonna do is when I is equal to five, it's gonna break. And what that means is that it's gonna break out of the loop body and control flow is gonna go here. It's gonna go to the next statement after the loop. And we're actually gonna kind of terminate our loop early. So let's just compile it again, run it again. And notice this now, loop start, loop end, and we stop when i is five. And that's what break does. It's a tool that we could use if maybe some special condition needs to be checked for during our loop body. And maybe if this special condition ever occurs, that's when we wanna terminate our loop. And so we can check for this condition here. And when it's the case, break is gonna bring control flow just outside the loop body to the next statement after the loop. So that's break. Now what continue does is continue skips over a, uh, a execution of the loop body. So let's put a continue. We'll put it say here. We'll say if I is equal to five continue here. What this is going to do is this is going to skip over the remainder of the loop body and it brings execution back up here again to checking the condition. So continue can be used to skip over the remainder of the loop body. So if we run this here, this is interesting what happens here. We get, oh, I didn't save it here. I gotta save the file, that would help. <laughs> That's why it's the same as before, because I didn't save the file. So I recompile it, run it here. Now look what we get here. We get one, two, three, four, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what's going on here is that when i is equal to five, we skip over the rest of the loop body. So when i is equal to five, we skip over the rest of the loop body. We never print this. And what happens is because of this continue is there when i is equal to five, we actually bring execution up here. We check, you know, that five is less than ten, which it is. Then we go down here. We increment i, and i becomes six. I is no longer equal to five, so we don't continue. And we print F and we get I six. And so continue is something we can use when maybe do again, due to some special condition, um, we, we, we want to skip over the rest of the execution of the loop body. Now break and continue 
these are things you'd want to use a little bit carefully just because they can make your code a little bit. If you look at these examples here, they can make your code a little bit more difficult to trace and think about. But sometimes they are quite useful for writing programs. They're going to be easier to understand, but we just want to be careful that we're not using them sort of all the time in all of our loops because they can also kind of make our code a little bit more difficult to reason about. So we just want to make sure that we're, we're using them for a good reason where they really make sense and they actually make the code more clear to use them. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.